a lot of people very interested in wanting to know how to have greater business success. Hmm. They want to know what the secret is. Why does it work? Why do so many mom and pop businesses and partner businesses start out with wonderful intent and the next thing you know, a year later, they are gone. Right. There's a reason, Scott, that we don't have successful businesses. It's true. Today, Scott Hammond is going to inform us what the secrets are in having better and better successful businesses. Welcome, Scott. Thanks, Rebecca. Appreciate that. Well, one of the first things I talk about is that you are a brand. In other words, if you do what you say and say what you do, you are a brand in everything that you do uh, as you make and keep appointments, as you keep promises, as you do what you say, and as you follow through, people begin to understand that you as a personality, as a person, are your own brand. And So when they think of you, do they think in terms of, can I count on her? Can I count on him? Can I? Can, will they follow through? Will they deliver? So one of the first notions is, are you legit? Are you consistent? Are you reliable? Mm -hmm. Do you mean what you say? Right. Do you keep your word? Mm -hmm. Do they know you, like you, trust you? Then they will buy from you. So the first concept would be that you are definitely a brand. No matter good or bad or a mix, you are certainly creating a message by your actions. And your actions speak louder than your words ever will. Amen to that. Glad you said that. A lot of people don't realize. They go to a business mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they say, it's a business. I trusted them. Right. That's good. Or is it? You should really check a track record. Sure. Sure. Know who you're dealing with. Another thing that we talk about in, um, in business is having personal goals and goal setting. My father uh, sat me down right out of college or while I was in college and he gave me these Tommy Hopkins tapes who was an old sales trainer. And with that was this really cool blueprint to your life. And it had um, three months, six month, one year, five, 10, 15, 20 year goal uh, planning. And so I put pen to paper and I started setting goals. And it was amazing because my life changed. I started achieving uh, some of these things that I actually took from up here and in here and put them on here with one of these. So I took the poor man's laptop and a pen and I wrote down specifically what I wanted to do, to be, to achieve, or accomplish. And it's, it's amazing, the magic of goal setting, uh, specifically as it relates to you as a, a career person, uh, a business person, a uh, salesperson, marketing, whatever you do. Uh, setting goals for your professional life are really key, a really key point to um, taking your, your career, your game to the next level. Well, if you travel through life with no roadmap and no direction and no destiny, how can you expect to get there? Good point. <laughs> another, another aspect is having good uh, communication skills and delivery skills. And we teach this, Rebecca and I are in Toastmasters together, have been for many years. Um, one of the things they teach us uh, from the very beginning is to be, uh, to be a good communicator, to, to know how to reach out to people, to tell a good story, to have order in what you're going to say, to tell, 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 to have uh, good hands, good eyes, good facial expression, good body language, sit up straight, tell your story. And I think that's a key component because we live in a YouTube generation where it's two, three minutes max, and then you lose people. They're gone. Well, people don't realize that if your words are betrayed by your actions, right. You are not believable. You're right. And if you hear what someone says, mm -hmm. but you pay no attention to what their body language is or how they feel, mm. or whether or not they're comfortable with you, or what their emotional environment is, True. you're not paying attention. Great point. And if you have somebody for a brief moment, you better be compelling, you better get to the point, and you better know what roadmap it is that you're trying to have that courageous conversation about. You better know what the end result is. So is it persuasion? 
Is it uh, agreement? Are you trying to get somebody to see your point of view? Whatever that is, you better become competent, if not proficient, at becoming a great communicator. And that's one of the key things in all of business, in all of sales, in all of life, and family, you would agree? Agree. I do agree, 100%. That you better, you better. You would do well in learning good communication skills. Uh, and part of that is creating a, what we call a 60-second elevator pitch. And all that is, is be able to tell somebody within, whether it's 30, 60, 3 minutes, whatever that, that small amount of time is, what you're about, what you do, and ask for some business. In other words, if you were in the elevator with, um, I don't know, chairman of Microsoft, would that be Bill Gates? Or somebody <laughs> from Google or someone, and you, and you had something you wanted to say and you wanted to do business with them, what would you say in that 30 seconds? How would you be, just punch them in the head with how wonderful and amazing you are, and to tell that story and to leave them, leave that elevator, walk out, having them want more and how to get a hold of you and want to get back to you. So uh, that elevator pitch is usually something to the effect of, hi, my name is and this is what I do, and uh, something amazing that sets you apart from all your competition, that you're amazing because. And then on the back side of that, it has some sort of an ask. And I'm looking for a few people that I would like to do business with in X, whatever that is. And so, can you tell your story briefly? And you could tell your story about your church, you could tell your story about your career, you could tell your family story, you could tell your, your speech story. It doesn't have to be just one thing about your career, it could be a short story about your, um, your passion for um, ending um, cancer. I'm glad you said that because coupled with all of those things you said are your passion your intent mm -hmm. and your purpose and the clarity of the same. And if your heart, your passion, your emotion comes through with truth, right. with truth, mm -hmm. it's believable. Right. That truth is resonated through your entire body. Mm -hmm. True. People think that it isn't, but it really is. There's an old common saying that if it feels wrong, it probably is. Yeah, listen to your conscience. It's a good. It's there for a reason. Right. Sometimes guilt is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Fear is a good thing. Don't touch the pit bull because it'll take your arm off. Uh, so if, when you fear the dog, it, maybe there's a reason for that, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if you're dealing with someone you've never dealt with before, mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with them this moment. Mm -hmm. Back off mm -hmm. until you really investigate and feel sure about mm -hmm. every step you're taking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a trust factor. And, and some of that I talk about in um, my book, The Everyday Dad, and I've talked about it in some of the things I speak about. And that is uh, relationship sales. Um, and that could be in any business at all. Do you have a relationship with this person? Do they, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you, you care. care. Exactly, because if you don't care about them, they will soon find out and they will not be back. Correct. Or if they don't care about you and I'm just another number, Exactly. I don't want to do business with that person or that company. It's like I'm, I'm getting that commodity feel. Um, an exception to that for me is Starbucks. I'll go in, hey, Scott, are you having the 007? Yeah, I'd like that. And they're like, they know my name, they know my drink. And I'm 52 years old and I'm a big, giant little kid inside. <laughs> and I got recognized. I got a gold star because they knew me. And I'm going, what's up with that? But what good service does like that is it sets a stage for relationship. Are you aware that in Humboldt County there are an extremely large number of business meetings mm -hmm. that go on at Starbucks? Who knew? I think Starbucks knows that and they set it up for that. But yes. Yeah, there's uh, the whole coffee thing. I don't know what that is. I should have got stock early on. So anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about marketing for a minute. Can we do that? I'd love it. A couple things that we talk about in marketing uh, are certainly advertising, but uh, do you have a web presence? Are you present? Uh, does your website work? Are you connected um, in a website that has video, that has your story, that tells a little bit about you or a lot about you or your product? Uh, of course, that's kind of a given anymore. 
Uh, there's mass marketing, meaning TV, radio, print, which are, all serve a great purpose. Uh, there's social networks like our Facebook page and your LinkedIn and um, you know Twitter and a thousand others. But there's some basic ones that you almost seems to me you almost have to be part of. Facebook certainly seems to be that today in our world. Um, so if you wanted to be out there, could you master some of those uh, those areas? Another area is the telephone. Bring hello. I'm picking up the phone. Hi, how you doing? Oh look, <clears throat> oddly enough, there's a phone right here. Are you good on the phone? Can you talk to people and smile and have a conversation and be amazing with people on the phone? This, ladies and gents, plus a smartphone, which I can't show you because I don't, mine's in the car. <laughs> this is a super valuable tool in that you can reach out and touch hundreds of people in a day with just pushing these little buttons, these 10 buttons. It's amazing. It's quite a device. And you can reach out, and I don't have to walk Bayshore Mall or walk Eureka or walk San Francisco. I can call strategically, talk to the right people, and have conversations. And again, am I believable? Am I trustworthy? Am I developing a relationship? Or do I just call and pitching right away, like the, like the evening uh, pitch guy that comes on, the telemarketer? Yes, and you beg him, please, I told you to take my number off the list. I hate that guy. <laughs> Why is he calling again? Man, and you put him, do not call us. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being a relational and using a phone. And what I do is I, I just check in with people. Hey, how you doing? I was thinking about you. Wanted to say hi. How's your day? And suddenly people are talking to me. And you know what I really like about you is you don't call and try to sell me a thing. You legitimately seem to really care about me, about my business, about my cause, about my whatever, our relationship. And so Point of the point is that a lot of sales and a lot of business and marketing is based on a relationship paradigm. If a situation of marketing or partnership or even friendship is not a win-win situation mm -hmm. for both persons involved, right. then it isn't good enough. That's right. It should be a triple win, you know, and I want you to win more than me. And really if mean it's that. a triple win, it actually expands. In mm -hmm. other words, two people come together, and in their creative ability and their personal expansion, they right. create a third and greater thing. Right. They bridge things with their differences, which means that right. they are greater because of their differences, not in spite of them. One plus one equals three. Exactly. And so once we start cutting each other down and saying, me, 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 and only me, you're actually diminishing. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I agree with that. And I think uh, one of the last points in being great in business and, or good at business and getting better at business is nurturing those relationships and being a relationship person who is not a thing person. In other words, it's important to have things just so things don't have us. You. That's right. It's cool to have a car. It's great to have a bank account. I like the fact that I have um, a credit card and I could spend money and go buy something. If I needed a new jacket, I'll go buy a jacket or bread or go to Costco or whatever. But it's important to know that people are first. In other words, you can't take anything with you. There are, we were just talking before this, there are no U-Hauls going behind the hearse at the funeral. Nothing goes along with you to heaven other than those good relationships and your, your good name and your legacy, which is kind of the last point, and that's a done business. When you've done all these and you've done well in business and you're doing well, one of the things that you leave is an awesome legacy. And I know you know a little bit about legacy because you're a legacy lever. <laughs> the interesting thing is, Scott, when we talk about values, most of us consider, okay, values are money and mm -hmm. what money will buy. The reality is the most valuable thing when we research human behavior mm -hmm. are the relationships and their effect on us in our lives. Right. If the effect was bad, the scars can be lifelong. Devastating. The relationships we have are powerful. Mm. They change lives. Yet, we tend to think that they don't count because mm. they don't fall in the monetary system of values. Right. They are the most valuable thing human beings have. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. We have an effect, wittingly or okay. unwittingly, mm -hmm. on the relationships we have. How many of us do it wittingly? Yeah, and being intentional about leaving that legacy about uh, who, who is it that listens to you? What are, what are your gifts and what, what are you all about? Identifying that. Second, who is your audience? Who are you leaving that legacy to or with? And it's not just your stuff. I mean, people will get your stuff, that's fine. But are they gonna get your stuff, your, your heart? And that is a, a tricky proposition because, because we're all mixed, we're human, we're part of the human race. We all have a bit of a mixed bag. However, if you know what your gifts are and what you're good at, your talents, if you know who your audience is, who picks up when you throw down, who loves it when you show up, and then lastly, if you know your venue, uh, whether it be a business or a work of art or a book or a blog or some music, uh, you suddenly have a venue to leave this world a better place and to really make your life count. In this case, in business, uh, it's back to that, uh, that relationship uh, uh, paradigm. I worked for a guy for 20 years who was awesome. He took care of his employees. He took care of the public. He took care of his clients. He took care of those within his industry. And he was an amazing guy. And my dad called him a prince of a guy because he just took the venue of business and took it to the next greater good level. Which, was, legacy. which was the humanitarian part of caring. True. Yeah. True caring. Mm -hmm. To have compassion mm -hmm. for the betterment of everybody on both ends of the business deal. Right. And he won financially as well. He, he, there was, you know, money pursued him. So that wasn't an issue either. So it was amazing. And how many people have we known in popular culture who died of a drug overdose, who had loads of money? They're just miserable people. Um, in and out of jail, five marriages, 20 kids, the list goes on, where their lives really didn't mirror any sort of a positive value system. And there are plenty of examples, and we won't go there. Isn't it amazing, statistically, how many people spend megabucks on habits that are personally destroying them, and they know it. Sure, sure. And they choose to do that. They choose to do that. Why? What's wow. their opinion of themselves that they have so little self-value? Well, somebody named Bob Hammond, my dad, was an alcoholic until the last 33 years of his life he was sober and so I got a big taste of the mindset of, of both alcoholism and sobriety so it's awesome <laughs> I, I'm really really privileged and I um, growing up I was a crazy drug abusing drinking kid and I hung out with my father as he was getting sober and it's funny how I'm becoming my father <laughs> it rubs <laughs> off on so what's happened is um, I understand that addiction is not personal so if there's somebody I love and they're addicted, it's not even about me. It's their pain is their own. And how do I best love and pray for and care for that person as they work it out, baby? Because a lot of people have pain and they self-soothe or smoke or drink or use. use. And um, as, a, uh, as a relationship person, I'm not going to support that, but I'm going to support them. So how do I love them in spite of their self-destruction? That's probably an entire other video. <laughs> Actually, dividing the act or the mistake from the person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the person is not the mistake. The mistake Correct. is separate from the person. Good word. It's simply an act of ignorance and not knowing. Right. And all of us, I don't care who we are, have had acts of ignorance and not knowing. This is just another one that happens to be habitual because they're in a rut. Sure. Sure. So if you can divide the person from the mistake, mm -hmm. love the person and mm -hmm. don't like the mistake, right? but never stop loving the person mm -hmm. and divide them, then you have a tool. Yeah. And when you take this principle back into business, you realize that <clears throat> in business what makes or breaks you is the team mm -hmm. that you have to work with. Mm -hmm. They must be reliable, they must be responsible. Mm -hmm and that's important. Mm -hmm. One of the big problems we have in small mom and pop businesses is that we hire people because they're my friend's kid. <laughs>
they're my second cousin, they're right. my little irresponsible brother, and I have to do it because I have the business. No, no you don't. don't. I think I hired all of those. The bottom line is um, you can separate the person from the habit or the, the misbehavior. And I think what we're talking about is boundaries. Exactly. Because that whole codependence thing doesn't work, and I'm going to support you and your habit. No. I think there are consequences for actions, and sometimes they hurt. If I have a kid that's going to run in the traffic, I am going to grab him by the scruff of the neck and throw him on the ground if I had to. It, if it came to saving him, there's a boundary issue. And one of the strongest boundary words is no. This is why it's so important when you have a member of your family or a friend that is irresponsible, don't bring them into your business. Let them learn hmm. to be responsible with something else. <laughs> it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Right. Don't put them in a position to be responsible between you and the public. That is a huge mistake that's hmm. made in the beginning of new young businesses. Hmm. Another huge mistake, Scott. People say, I'm a business, therefore I must donate to everyone that asks me. Hmm. You can't do that because everyone, everyone, everyone will ask you. You donate what you can afford to sure. donate and you stop. Mm -hmm. Because the public cannot support your excessive donating habit if they're not shopping with you. Hmm. True. You can only spend what you can afford to spend. And mm -hmm. I actually know of several small businesses that were so concerned about their big public mm -hmm. name that they gave away all their profits and went broke so that they would have a good exterior vision of themselves. Not the greater good when you go out of business. <laughs> give them a little counsel on that, Scott. Well, I, I think if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be about uh, profit. You're going to be about creating jobs. You're going to be about... Uh, creating the greater good, that, that, that product, that service that, that helps the community, the world at large. And if you are uh, soft-headed and soft-hearted, it's a bad combination because you're going to probably make a lot of poor business decisions. And so I think um, there's a place in the budget to be generous with, you know, organization of your choice. There's no doubt that that's a great, awesome, uh, commendable thing. Good for you. But everybody in this economy and where we live comes with that handout. Hey, how about me? And the answer is uh, that boundary word, uh, no. And, and it's not no in a harsh way. It's no, I'm trying to preserve my business. I'm trying to preserve these jobs and trying to do it all and create the greater good, which is... It's a balancing act. I think there are seasons where you can be very generous. Yeah, also you can tell them, or I've already donated at this time, thank you. Uh, be wise, be a good steward of your resources, and uh, invest your money wisely. I think that's a really good counsel. So you are a brand in, re in review. We are all a brand in our actions. We create uh, an, an image of how we're perceived. Don't forget to set goals. Right. Have some amazing personal and business goals. Uh, be a good communicator. Learn to talk with your hands like me. See my hand? <laughs> <laughs> learn to chat. Learn to tell stories. Learn to be what my kids call legit. Be real. Be transparent. I don't want a phony baloney. I want somebody who's real and coming off as their, uh, my friend Pastor Jim calls their authentic self. Exactly. I love that. And you kind of touched on that. That authentic self. Who is that for you? And a lot of us don't know that. We're still figuring that part out. Um, learn the elevator pitch. Tell, tell me what you do in short order so I can say yes or no or give me more. So if you're selling widgets, I, tell me that in a short, concise way so I can go, hmm, okay, I want to hear from her. Or I don't. I'm, thank you, but no thanks. And then be a good marketer. Be on the web. Be an advertiser. Don't forget to network. Go out, shake hands and kiss babies and hang out with people. And really... Uh, BNI uh, is uh, Business Networking International, and their slogan is Givers Gain. So it's exactly what we talked about earlier, what you mentioned, is that make it about other people. It's not just about you. Sorry, I, this is the first time you're hearing 
It is. <laughs> it's not about you. It's a little bit about you because you, you're here. But make it about other people and you'd be surprised how much they'll make it about you. Exactly. Exactly. And so nurture those relationships and then leave your awesome legacy uh, for posterity from, from living a life on purpose, intentional, that left a message of your, uh, your love and care as a person. When you said make it about other people, if your business in dealing with the public mm -hmm. isn't about other people and serving other people, you are in the wrong business. Right. Those darn people, they show up all the time. If it wasn't for the people, this would be a great business. A lot of people have said that jokingly, but guess what? There's going to be these human beings that show up all the time, and they work for you, they do business with you. we got to be in the human being business, and if we're not, that's a paradigm that you can change. If not, go dig ditches or go work with animals or something that doesn't have people. Then you'll be more happy. We are people dealing with people. Mm -hmm. And without humanitarian qualities and concerns and caring, we cannot intelligently expect positive results. Mm -hmm. This does not mean to be stupid and be in a position before the public to be responsible and hire somebody you know is irresponsible, hmm. because that in itself is an irresponsible behavior on your part. It's not an mm -hmm. act of compassion. Say no when you should say no. You have no obligation to explain. Just say no. Mm -hmm. Just say no. Mm -hmm. If you can't give any more and you donated all you can give in money, say, I have already done my donating. You may donate in another way. You can teach, volunteer for some community time. Mm -hmm. You can be kind with your wisdom. But be intelligent on how much you give out. Mm -hmm. You cannot give out more than you take in. That's right. And expect success. Well, you'll be unhealthy because you'll give yourself away. I think you touched on something that's really key, and that is a lot of my gifts have nothing to do with my money. Exactly. I have time. I have skills. I have talent. What if I'm a mechanic and I could work on your car for you? That'd be awesome. What if I'm just a good listener? I married somebody who's a great, awesome, wonderful listener and it's awesome so find out what those gifts are what those valuable and those riches are in your life and then be a giver in balance and learn to say yes and learn to say no that's marvelous that you brought up the listening because listening is 50 percent of communication <laughs> at least 50 percent if mm -hmm. no one listens you're not communicating right so remember we have, we have a lot of that <laughs> two of these and one of these yes yeah it's true in in review, my challenge, may I challenge you, here it comes. What will you do, what one thing will you do today to get better at your career, your business, whatever role that is you have as a parent or as a person on earth, that responsibility, what one thing can you take away from that we've talked about today that you can go employ today and go do it right now, make that phone call, write that goal, do that one thing, start that website, go start blogging, start writing your book. It starts with a thing called a blog. Put it down on paper and own it, make it yours, and go leave your positive legacy because we'll all be lesser for it if you don't go out and be all you can be. Would you agree? I agree 100%. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you for bringing this to the public. We've had a demand for it. People want it. People need it. And our deliberate intention is to bring you wisdom that you can use every day in your everyday life to make it a little bit better. Thank you so awesome. much, Scott Hammond. It's always a delight. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it.